There we go. Good morning. I'd like to talk to you today about a space revolution that is underway. And due to its exponential nature, it's currently flying under the radar. Even though I believe that in three years' time, all of you here are going to be accessing space from your cell phones. And even as its capability to mitigate big global problems is increasingly being demonstrated. Now, uh, there we go. So the type of big global problems I'm talking about, that's not the right slide, there we go is illegal fishing. I was shocked to learn that illegal fishing is a $20 billion global problem. Not only is this devastating the fishing industries of local developing economies, it's devastating and potentially threatening the protein supply of some 3 billion people on the planet. And that's not necessarily the worst of it. You have thousands of people being trafficked and enslaved by the illegal fishing industry facilitated by boats that can go into the open waters and just disappear. And of course, to talk about weather, which was the introduction and, and the big story, I think, of this presentation. The increasing severity and frequency of extreme weather events was top of mind, of course, recently with the COP21 climate summit. And now the numbers that I have up on the stage here is just talking about the economic losses. And that's to say nothing about the human impact and disruption that is even more difficult to gauge. This is why extreme weather is now on the number two list of the World Economics Forum uh, global risk list. So what do all of these big problems have in common? They all have in common this as a big part of the solution. This is a satellite, and, and more particularly, it's a nanosatellite. And I bet all of you here, when you think of a satellite, you're not necessarily thinking of something that is the size of a bottle of wine, which is how big these satellites actually are. And what I'm talking about in particular here is not just one nanosatellite, but it's actually a fleet of nanosatellites. So the red dots up here is the, the satellite rollout for my company. And we are just one of several organizations that are taking advantage of this type of nanosatellite technology. So the core story for me of why this is interesting and relevant is that exponentially improving technologies can really change the economic fate of people and countries. And now I think everybody who comes to DLD really gets the difference between linear growth uh, and, and exponential growth. My slides are skipping around here. And, and exponential growth. And I think it is far more difficult, even if you, you get the difference, to be able to identify early on what are the technologies that are actually on an exponential curve, especially when they're sitting at the bottom of the curve right there with below average capabilities. And I'm going to flip back. And so here's a couple quotes or supposed quotes of how difficult this can actually be to identify the technologies that are going to be exponential uh, and transformative. And I have a more recent example here. In 2007, was anyone worried about Apple taking over the PC market? Uh, probably not necessarily, but just a few years later, Apple is the most uh, valuable company in the world. The PC market is declining, and tablets and mobile have exploded. And now, there's a, a long history of these types of exponential technologies transforming humankind uh, and economies and having a, a pervasive effect across all levels of society. Information technology in particular has been recognized for this and is now part of the, the economic development, uh, the Millennium Development Goals, excuse me. And just one example of this is the cell phone, which went from being considered an expensive luxury to something that is now a basically a, a free necessity. In some parts of Africa, mobile phones are powering the entire banking system. Now, I would like to propose, or I would like you to consider that nanosatellite technology platforms will have a similar far-reaching impact across all levels of social and economic activity, and in fact, will bring space access to the mass market by taking advantage of its exponential growing capabilities. 
And I want to show you here why I think nanosatellite technology is an exponential technology. When they were first invented in 2002, they were just a tiny fraction of the overall satellite market. Now by 2014, nanosatellites, uh, more nanosatellites have been launched than all other types of satellites combined. Uh, if you look at things like memory and power, et cetera, nanosatellites have gone from being below average capability up to something that is more than good enough. It started out as being for a niche education user and now is going mass market. And this is a classic story of disruptive innovation where you are creating users from non-users. And it shows in the number of people that are also talking about nanosatellites or, or CubeSats, which is the other name for them. Now, I'm not someone who is actually that interested in space at all. I definitely didn't go out to see the, the latest Star Wars movie. But what gets me really excited about nanosatellites is what they can do for people um, and everyday businesses. So my company, by the end of this year, will be able to tell where every ship on the planet is, updated every few minutes, every single day. And what that does is give me an unprecedented and almost real-time view of $18 trillion worth of international trade. It allows me to potentially have some impact in stemming some $10 billion of losses from piracy. And maybe I might have some small part in saving someone from uh, enslavement in the illegal fishing trade. And that, for me, is incredibly amazing. The bigger story for the world, though, is the weather and climate story. With nanosatellites and a fleet of nanosatellites, you can have 100 times the critical weather data that is actually not currently available today. And this is especially in remote regions where you don't have sensors all over the place and where much of the extreme weather events get started. Here you can see 94% uh, of all the data that goes into weather forecasting comes from satellites. But at the same time, the number of instruments that are going up into space is actually declining. And this is something that is on uh, the high risk list for the US because of that. This is a gap that nanosatellites can fill. And not only that, by the amount of data that a fleet of nanosatellites can collect, it is going to create a step change in the accuracy and uh, how far in advance we can actually make very accurate weather predictions. And it's also going to have a big impact in our ability to make decisions ahead of time to help avert some of these extreme weather events that are inevitably going to happen. And so I think you've all heard this kind of story before about new technologies that are moving exponentially and that are transforming the world. Unseen by most at first, and eventually they're in everyone's hands. So over the next few years, as you start hearing the same thing about nanosatellites and about space, I want you to remember that you heard it here first at DLD from Spire. Thank you.